Hi, so we have an awful lot on deck this week. This is week five of our winter class of CIS 101. And that means there's only one more week after this week. So if you're still here, you should pat yourself on the back because that means you survived. So far, so good. I know week three and four had a whole ton of stuff. That's remember, we talked about early on that we were gonna load up week three and four so that the last two weeks of class weren't quite, quite as intense because right after the end of week six, we start spring semester like two days later, right? Anyhow, pretty much everything's due on Sunday. And if you have anything outstanding from week four, like um, the programming projects or anything, those are all due Sunday. There'll be a couple of new things for next week, but I, I pretty much want your plate clear. So that way you have time to do the final and we'll talk about that next week. So don't worry about that. Anyhow, let me jump into Moodle and show you around. I'll do a quick show because there are several videos that explain lots of things. And so you really only have three new assignments this week. Um, if you scroll down here really quickly, you'll see there's a movie review forum under the part one do. And then under the part two do, there's a spreadsheet project. But this video talks about the spreadsheet project. So I'm not going to talk about that a whole lot. And then under part three, copyright, there's a Creative Commons license selector. So all of those are reasonably painless, I think, I hope. And uh, let me jump back up here. So the first thing that's on deck this week, um, you should read the checklist. So let me pop open the checklist just to run down this with you. And you know, always it's got to load for a second. But you should always open up. Well, you don't always have to, but just know that you can open up this menu item down here and just jump to the different parts without having to scroll through the whole thing. So if you're trying to get back to something, always open up that menu. It's super useful. But then, you know, I collapse it when I'm not using it. So I'm going to reduce the size on this a little bit just so more of it fits on the screen. Um, what you're going to do this week, Tuesday and Thursday in Zoom, is we're going to do presentations. And the way that's going to work, let me go back to Moodle here, uh, because there's a thing that you'll need. So the way that's going to work is when it's somebody's turn to present, there's a feedback form right here, right up at the top. And there's a link to the feedback form. And so that you'll have that up while somebody's talking. This is super easy. It's not very complicated at all. Who are you? Pick your name. Who's talking? Pick their name. So far, so good, right? What is the title of their presentation? That's just kind of a check because sometimes you don't always catch the name, but you usually catch what the topic is, right? And so that way I can go in and fix things um, afterwards if, if that happens. And then did you watch it live in Zoom or did you watch it on video? So there, we have a small enough group that I don't think we'll need to do the video option, but we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, most of them you'll just check live in Zoom. And then three questions. How interesting was it on a scale of one to five? Was it not very interesting or was it extremely interesting? Um, on the slides, how effective were the slides? They were not very effective or they were extremely effective. So think back to that death by PowerPoint video. Uh, did they do that stuff? Because that would put them down on the not very effective side. But did you find the slides clean, easy to follow, not a lot of text, um, good graphics? Did they support what the speaker was talking about? So that would be very effective. And then in this last one, there's two parts. So share some constructive comments, constructive feedback about the presentation. Um, you can say a little bit about the delivery, you know, uh, keeping in mind that everybody's nervous. So kind of keep that part in mind. But overall, most people do pretty well. And I'm um, talking about the slides, you could talk about the content. So write up a couple of sentences that are constructive feedback, and then include at least one question that you have to the speaker about their topic. So at least one thing that you were curious about after listening to them. So make sure you include those two parts. And then when you're done, just hit submit. And there'll be a link that says, go back. You want to submit another one? And you just come back and reset it and get ready for the next time. So that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward and easy. Um, I give you 
points on that for your level of constructive feedback. So how, what kind of good feedback do you give them? Now, at the end, like over the weekend, or once, you know, once everybody's got all their feedback done, what I'll do is I'll give everybody a copy of their feedback. I'll take out the names so you won't know who said what, but you will get a copy, a PDF copy of your feedback. So you'll get to see all the comments people make. And usually that's the fun part. So I always like doing that. Um, so this first part that we're gonna do is one of my all time most interesting, super cool favorite parts, okay? Um, computer history. And I like it because we start off with your fingers and we end up with quantum computers. Now, how do we get from here to there? You'll have to take a stroll through memory lane to find out. And so there's some slides here, or there's a video here with some slides that will, um, I take it back, sorry, just the slides. But if you go through, you'll see the different things that we're gonna hit and um, lots of videos to watch. So I was probably, you probably should plan like an hour or so on this piece of it. But the videos will go through all these interesting things, where we started with computers, um, how we got to where we're going. I mean, did you ever wonder that? I've seen some timelines that take the history of computers back to like homing pigeons in ancient Greece. Mostly, it's just a quest for people to communicate and to calculate. And they want to do it farther and faster. And so it's interesting how these machines help that. So I have a lot of like original videos of early computers and um, people talking about different things. And then it wraps it up at the end. So two years ago now, we went to the Consumer Electronics Show. And well, I guess it was last year. Anyhow, so we went um, to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And IBM had their quantum computer there. Now, if you don't know what a quantum computer is, you should take a look because they're super cool and they're way different than anything we're using now. So yeah, they had their quantum computer there. And we were talking to the quantum computer scientist. This guy knows how it works, like he works with it. And so we were asking him some questions and I said, hey, you know, could I record you for my class? And he said, sure. So we have a video of the quantum computer guy talking to you about what quantum computers can do and why they're so interesting. So definitely watch that interview. Now, the assignment for this part is a movie review. It's not like a normal movie review. So this area up here, the roadmap, is going to give you some information. So basically, you need to prove to me that you watched the movie. So there needs to be enough information there that I am convinced that you watched the movie and you thought about the big ideas and you thought about the connections to our class. And so I give some information here about how to write a good movie review. Now, here's the tricky part. Is this is very unstructured, which I know bothers some people, but it also opens it up for some creativity. And so, Probably the least amount of creativity points will go to if you just write up a paper. Like, I really don't want to read a paper. You probably don't really want to write a paper. But you could do some interesting things with slides. Some people have made videos. When we were meeting on campus, some people would build things and bring it in and demonstrate all the criteria. Super cool. So if you build something, just make sure you show it uh, on the video. Now, down the side here are some examples that previous students did. I haven't kept it like totally up to date, but there's a couple of good things there. There's the movie review rubric. You really should know what that's all about. This is just the points, okay? But actually click on the document and this will give you a pretty good in-depth idea of what I'm looking for on that rubric. Um, and then down the side are all the different movies you can choose from, because this isn't just any movie. You can't just watch anything, okay? The movies I've selected are either documentaries about something to do with computers, or they're um, fictionalized movies, but they stay pretty true to the original, as best I can find out, like pretty true to the original story. I mean, it is Hollywood. They do take some poetic license on a few things, like in the imitation game, 
he never really had any sort of like little romance thing going on with the lady there but you know it's hollywood so that's what they do but by and large it stays true to the story it's anyhow so if you click on any of these pages it'll give you a little bit of synopsis about the story it'll give you some links to where you can go watch it um, most of these things are either on youtube or amazon prime or netflix and most people have some of those right youtube's free um, there's just some really interesting things. The Secret Rosies is one that I just came across. I'm always looking to add to my list, and I try to put a trailer in when there's a trailer. I'm always looking to add to my list. So if you find a movie that you think qualifies for that, it has to be about something about um, the computer era or the impact computers have made on something, but it also has to be true to life. So it can't be I don't know, what is it, like Ready Player One. It can't be like in the realm of science fiction, okay? It's got to be fairly true, telling a true story. So you've got lots of interesting ones here. This Alpha Go is a documentary on YouTube. Um, it's about an hour long, and it's about this game that got programmed into artificial intelligence and then played the best player in the world. And so there was a, a big challenge years ago where they had the computer play chess against the best chess player in the world. And that computer only had to memorize, I'm trying to remember, I wanna say like 300 or 400 moves, like for a computer, it wasn't a big deal. In AlphaGo, there are literally billions of moves. As many moves as there are stars in the universe is what I read. So it's almost infinite. And so that's a lot more complicated. Anyhow, it's really interesting because the top player in the world um, puts up a pretty good fight. And I'm not going to tell you who wins. It's not who you think. So uh, have fun with any of those. Any of those movies are really good. All right. So this is the detail about the movie review. And then, oh, it's going to go through all of them again. Never mind. Let's go back to week five directly. Sorry about that. Then what you're going to do is come down to the movie review forum. And again, here's the roadmap. Here's the rubric. Um, here's a list of the movies. So this is like the short version. But if you just look at this, you're not going to get all the details. And what you're going to do when you're done with this is make a post, um, link to it or embed it, whatever you need to do to get it, you know, so that we can see it and give a short you know, summary of what it's about, and then let us see your project. So this is always kind of a fun, interesting, creative one. And who doesn't want to watch a movie? I gave you all the movies last week. Last week was kind of busy, so I don't know if you had time to pick one. Anyway, on part two, we're talking about databases. Databases are super useful. They're the back end of all the websites you know and love. Uh, if you've ever shopped at Amazon, that's a ginormous database. Um, anyhow, there's lots about databases here. What I want you to do, and actually, if you watch these two introduction to database videos, they're really short. It's super overview, though. If you watch these, like, 10 minutes of investment of time, and you'll know probably 90% of what you need to know about databases, including about careers that have to do with databases. However, the activity out of this week is learning how to use a spreadsheet. And some of you have probably done that. You've probably used Excel or Google Sheets. Like I use Google Sheets all the time. I love them. And I use Google Forms all the time, obviously, because you guys submit stuff to me. So there's some GCF um, learn things about that, about the sheets and about the forms. But what I really want you to take a look at are a couple of videos. So this first video, um, this guy is, is funny. So he's a mathematician and he's a stand-up comedian, which is kind of a really weird combination. But he um, talks to you. You don't have to watch the whole video. But you remember we did digital media not too long ago, right? We did the digital images. He links spreadsheets to digital images and to your cell phone in a really funny way. Well, in a mathematic mathematician's funny way. But anyhow, there's an interesting little project you can do here. And this was my project out of it. And he talks about it um, in the video. So you got to watch the video to see what that's all about. This other one, this older gentleman has retired and he creates these amazing paintings using a spreadsheet. 
So I think that's worth watching also. And then when you come down here, there's a video about the spreadsheet project. But let me open the document just so I can show you. In a nutshell, I'm giving you $5,000 to have a spending spree and you have to create a spreadsheet to spend it. Please pay extra attention to this instruction here. So everything in this column has to be calculated by the spreadsheet. And I talk about that in that video. I will tell you the number one uh, problem people miss on this assignment is they just type in numbers. They say, oh, I'm just getting one of something. I'm just going to type in a number. Nope, no credit. So, and I warn people every time and every time half the class does it anyhow. So maybe this will be the time that everybody uses a calculation. And you do need to share your spreadsheet with me so that I can grade it because I will grade it in Google Sheets. All right, so you have to upload a file, but you have to share it with me or I can't grade it. All right, this last part, copyright, which is why I have the C here. That's copyright symbol, right? So there's a whole bunch of videos here, um, but if you only had to look at one thing, I would say, look at this original copyright, copy wrong um, software and slides, because it's a little bit more than just copyright. So the video is on the top where I'm going through all of this, but let me get over here. This video is actually going to cover software licensing, um, themes like open source and public domain and proprietary. It's going to talk about copyright, of course. It's going to look at Creative Commons, which has to do with your homework. It's going to talk about fair use because, you know, we all pop like pictures and videos into our slides and um, there are some guidelines where that's allowed. And then it's going to bring up some ethical issues that I think you're going to find very, very interesting. So here, these are the slides that I go through in the video. There are a whole bunch of other, um, other videos. These two videos I talk about in there also. But there's a lot in the learn. And if I had to, some of these are mentioned in my video and some aren't. But uh, the fair use tale talks about fair use using Disney movies. And it's really kind of annoying, but interesting the way they put it together. And the message is very clear on that. Anyhow, so lots of good things here, but you might want to focus in on the Creative Commons one because that has to do with your homework. The one thing that would be interesting for you to read is this Katie and the Shark. And I kind of wrote article, but it's not really an article. It's a page I put together because a couple of years ago, our class, this class, the 101 winter class, got involved in a 3D printing controversy with a designer in Florida and Katy Perry in the Super Bowl. How did that happen? It happened through Twitter. Crazy, huh? And yeah, this is a story of how that happened. And so, so there's a class right there. Story of how that happened. And so you can read through that if you want to find out what Katy Perry, the Super Bowl, a couple of sharks, 3D printing, and a CIS 101 class in the high desert how they're all connected. Um, the Creative Commons license selector is fairly easy. I have a video about how to do that. And you've all created stuff throughout this semester. Um, you've put a lot of stuff online on Google Drive or Twitter or wherever. And so part of this is going to have you walk through creating a license at Creative Commons. Watch the video. It's supposed to be a two minute tech tip, but it was actually like six minutes. So that's why it says a six minute tech tip. Now anyway, watch the video. It'll show you what to do. It'll show you, here's you know screenshots that you can take and then you just upload them to this assignment. That one's pretty easy. It's interesting to see how the process works, but it doesn't take long. And then finally, you'll have a logging out form way down here at the bottom. So make sure you get that in. Make sure you give me full answers. Some people are starting to kind of just put a half a sentence. And I can't really give you full credit if you do that. That's the one way I understand what you're learning in the class. Keeps it interesting. So I'm looking forward to Zoom this week. Remember, cameras on. I super appreciate all the people that turn their cameras on. And this week is probably more important than anything. Because I'm kind of used to it. But it's a, it's a little rude if somebody's talking to you about something interesting. I have a lot of interesting topics um, that people have submitted. It's kind of, it's a little unnerving to talk to a bunch of blacks, you know, boxes. So 
anyhow, I appreciate you guys jumping in and we'll see you soon.